Hello everybody and welcome to our tutorial video on the NASCAR Dash. I'm really excited about this product. Uh, we wanted to create something that was different from the traditional projection model uh, that would essentially allow you to kind of absorb all the research for an entire slate in a very short amount of time and allow you to build confident rosters in a very short amount of time. Uh, obviously the fun in DFS is in the roster building and sweating your teams and, and winning money. It's not in spending two or three or four hours researching a slate and trying to have to really crunch into things in order to, to build rosters you're confident in. And so we've created this and it's, it's very different and it's very cool and we're excited about it. So let me take you through it. Uh, right here we've got our dashboard for NASCAR. Um, each dashboard will have some basic rate, uh, race notes that you can read up on just to get a feel for what the race is, is uh, looking like and what the track's like and kind of what your basic expectations can be. And there'll be a recommendation for how you build your rosters. Uh, I'll talk about the hammers, movers, punters here in a little bit. Um, we have a section for alerts. Uh, anytime any of our experts uh, do an update to any of the drivers, these alerts will actually pop up in real time. And that's a cool thing so that, you know, as you're uh, building your teams, as you're sweating, maybe if you've got multiple sports going, um, any updates are going to appear in here and they're also going to appear up here on your uh, alert dashboard. Um, so you're always going to be in the know about things that are happening and, and changes that are taking place. Um, scrolling down, we come to our, our main dashboard here, and this is called the My Play section. Now, heading into every slate, our experts determine um, which drivers should start as plays. And then if I scroll all the way down here, there's a separate section called Fades, which is uh, drivers that you should be fading. Um, should you disagree for any reason, or maybe you want to interact with a driver that our experts has deemed a fade, uh, this little arrow button here in the top right corner will move a driver from fades uh, up to your my plays. Uh, likewise, if, if let's just say that there is a driver up here that you don't want any exposure to, you don't want to interact with, even though our experts think he's good, you can hit the X and they will pop back right down here to the my fade section. So you have the ability to interact with this and still kind of make your own choices um, and if for some reason you mess around here too much and you want to reset back to what the experts are, there's this nice little reset picks button back here, which will set it back to the way it originally was. Um, I'll shrink my menu here. So what are we looking at here? Well, each driver has a series of information. Uh, first, the backgrounds are color coded. And the way the color code works is... Uh, green are really good plays, and then it scales down to yellow, and then it scales down to orange, and then the worst plays are red. And you'll see we've got some green, yellow, a little bit of orange up here, and then you get down here and it gets closer to the red scale side of things. Um, if that's too confusing for you, I'll just kind of show you this light, nice little rank down here is also the overall rank for the driver. Uh, it aligns with the color coding. So you kind of have two ways to do it. If you want to just look at the background quick just to kind of get a feel, or if you want to look at the rank, um, it's on a five-star system. You can see what the overall rank is for how good of a play a driver is. Um, over here on the left, well, we've got the DK salaries over here, and we've got a risk factor. Um, and this is a cool thing because not all drivers are considered equal. Um, for example, uh, in the uh, Cobalt uh, 400 here um, for this race, you know, Kozlowski was ranked uh, first in qualifying and basically had the pole. So um, even though he had the ability to lead a lot of laps and to um, put up a lot of um, fastest laps, lead laps points, um, he comes at a little bit more of a risk because of the place differential scoring. And, you know, were he to start first and finish 12th, um, you're going to get negative points on the place differential. So there was a little bit more risk there. Whereas Jimmy Johnson coming from 16th, is a guy who um, you know came with less risk uh, because the place differential um, you know brought that into play and allowed him to have a higher ceiling and a higher floor. Um, so that's a cool little feature that again doesn't come out in traditional projection systems that gives you an idea of uh, what you're working with. Um, you can see what they qualified, of course, um, and then we do um, have GPP and cash play indicators as our experts decide. Um, you know, some plays are going to be cash only, some GPP only, some are both. Um, and this is, again, just our advice. doesn't mean you absolutely have to follow it, but it gives you a very quick and easy way to, to kind of go in if you want to build a cash register and just look at all the light blue um, cash plays and try and fit those into a lineup. Um, 
or you know take all of the slight risk plays and fit them into a lineup. So kind of gives you something to work with there. Um, moving down, uh, we have four scores uh, for each driver. Uh, and this is really kind of our, our core ratings that determine uh, how we go about it. Uh, and the cool thing is you can see here as I mouse over them, you can get a description of these. So if you can't remember what I tell you here in a second, just know that you can always mouse over it for a quick uh, understanding of what's going on here but you know our hammer scores uh, that's basically um, how much the driver is going to be able to score points by staying at the front of the race and earning your fastest lap points and your lead lap points um, on some tracks these can really add up a guy can come out and just dominate a race uh, lead a ton of laps get a ton of fast laps with the clean air and put up a monster score on other tracks, uh, there's going to be 20 different leaders along the race. And that's where, you know, coming back up here, you know, for each race, we're going to kind of tell you, hey, hammers are really important. Or, yeah, you don't really need to worry about hammer scores this week. Um, and so this is just a great quick way to see it, you know. Um, Kozlowski had a pretty high hammer score as a guy that we thought could get to the front. Truex had a really high hammer score. Uh, we actually felt like he had a better chance of taking the lead. And these guys both led a fair chunk of that race. Um, but as you get into the, some of these guys farther back here, um, you know, the confidence of them getting to the front and leading are much lower. Um, so this is a great indicator of guys who are going to earn those laps, be at the front during the stages, um, and, and earn those uh, floor points by, by being in the lead. Um, movers, on the other hand, are people that are going to move up through the pack and get good place differential. And so this is important because uh, a guy that can move way from the back to the front can earn a lot of points. Um, you can actually start a race 42nd and finish a race 23rd and get just as many place differential points as a guy who starts first and finishes first. Um, so again, depending on the race, some races are way easier to move up than others. Um, some races you will see a guy spending the entire race trying to move up. Other races you'll see a guy start 35th and be in the top five within a handful of laps. So um, mover points are important in races, and again, every race is different, which is why we don't just give you a bunch of raw data. You know, we're going to tell you, hey, you really need to focus on movers. You need to focus on hammers or whatever. But again, 10 being the best, one being the worst, you can see the guy. Guys that are most likely to move up through the field, uh, and you can see like Harvick was 19th. Um, he had the highest mover score because he's a guy that, in, in a lot of these longer track races, can really move up to the pack quickly. And he did. Unfortunately, he blew a tire last week and uh, didn't end up getting quite the score we'd hoped. But um, uh, it's a great way to get an idea of, of people that we expect to move up in the pack. Third score is your practice score. And practices are important because there's a limited amount of things that the NASCAR teams are allowed to change their cars between practice and, and race time. And so we start to get a picture of how well the car handles, um, how smooth it is on the track, uh, how great the engines are running. Um, you know, yes, drivers play a huge part in who wins races, but the cars play a huge part too. And sometimes a really great driver just does not have a car that's dialed in for a particular race, or maybe a, a driver that maybe isn't quite as skilled just really has a sweet car. It's just holding well and, and, uh, is, is really, uh, aerodynamic and hitting all the lines on the on the track and and so we we monitor this our experts watch this they watch the races um they will often be found putting notes in on these drivers throughout the practice sessions and this score kind of gives you an idea of how well they're performing in in those practices which kind of gives you an indicator of of where they're going uh, and then finally, we have a finish rating, and this is basically how well we expect them to finish the race. Um, are we expecting them to finish towards the front of the pack, towards the back of the pack? Um, this score somewhat correlates with the mover score, but not, not necessarily. Um, sometimes, you know, a guy can move up, but, you know, still have a hard time finishing the top five. Um, and so you can kind of watch as you go through these and see, you know, um, the guys that are way up front, they may have a low mover score because they don't have a lot of ways place to move up, but are they still expected to finish in the front of the pack? Or is it a situation where they're starting to the front, but um, you know, even though they're in the front, their their ability to finish is pretty low. Um, and so again, this this will give you kind of an idea, like you know, Suarez last week, top eleven, um, but he's got a mediocre finish score, so he's not expected to finish, you know, towards the front of the pack. So it gives you kind of a good idea for where where things are going to end up. Um, in addition to our scores, our experts weigh in on the drivers. And so uh, you will find um, 
you'll find out what, which side of the fence they're on with each of these drivers by where their face shows up. And you can learn a little bit more about these guys in the menu. Underneath the drivers, there's a section that talks about their background and shows you their Twitter accounts. I recommend you follow all the uh, experts because it's a great way to get some additional information and get to know them. Uh, one of the things I would recommend as a guy that plays DFS on a regular basis is learn the guys that you um, – you know, that you agree with and you think like, um, so that you can start to, um, start to analyze and understand, you know, Hey, this guy is on this guy. Why is he on him? Why is he on Keselowski this week? Why is he on Truex this week? And start to learn the sport through, uh, the logic and the, uh, data and the analysis that they're putting on. And then you can start to make your own analysis based off of what you've learned from those guys. And, and you can start to think like they think. And so, we make it easy for you here. Um, if the if the experts show up on the right, they're fans of this driver, and you can see as I mouse over them, you can see their comments. So, uh, you know, here Adams pointing out that uh, Keselowski won last year. He's got four straight top sevens, um, but he's concerned about him being the pole sitter. And again, this kind of ties in with what we've talked about here. He's got some risk. Um, being the pole sitter is not a lock. You know, he's not going to be able to get any place differential itself. So. Um, any finish behind first is going to kind of hurt him in terms of negative score on that front. Um, you know, uh, Wheels had no comments. Um, Joe's gone back and forth on Keselowski, but he does think he's got a good shot to lead the race. And um, what you won't see is, um, you know, a projection score, right? They're not coming here and saying, we project him to be 47.5 points. Why? Well, because one, um, I think that projection scores are overrated. I think the difference between a, a driver rated to hit 47.5 points and a driver rated to hit 43.5 points, while you may think that that's a two-point differential, in reality in DFS, because of the way things happen, it's really not a differential. They're really the same driver. Um, and so rather than try and give you some fictitious score that, that's impossible to perfectly and accurately predict anyway, um, I think it's more important to understand the reasoning behind why why you should or shouldn't um, follow a driver. Um, because sometimes you, you follow a projection and it doesn't pan out, and you don't know why it didn't pan out. You know, By looking at these experts, you can see, well, they both like him as a guy that can lead. He's got some good history here. Um, but there is risk involved with him not finishing you know, first, second, third. You know, if he falls back to 10th or 12th or 15th, um, he's going to crush your score. And so now knowing that, when you go to build your rosters, you can understand the risk and decide whether it's worth it or not. And if you take the risk and, you know, he blows a tire or, um, you know, gets a speeding penalty with 20 laps to go or something and ends up in the middle of the pack and you get a bad score, you understand that doesn't necessarily mean he was a bad play, but you understand why, why he didn't pan out. And I think that's so much more important for having confidence when you're building your rosters uh, and having confidence in how you build your rosters and understanding what you're up against um, so you know what to cheer for. Versus just throwing a guy in because he has a good projection score and you have no idea how this is going to pan out. Um, this is really catered, especially for those of you who may be coming from other sports and don't understand NASCAR, don't know it well. You can see these, inf you can see the information here in these scores and have a pretty good idea of, you know, what what what's going on with particular drivers and, and what you're targeting. Um, so this is really cool, and you know what's cool too is that our experts aren't always going to agree. Um, sometimes like Ryan Blaney, one of our experts is going to say, Hey, I like him as a GPP play. He's cheap. You know, I wouldn't use him in cash, but he could be, he could be somebody we could consider. Um, and, and on the flip side, somebody might come in and say, yeah, no, I don't like that guy. And here's why. And <coughs> when the experts are, uh, on the side of the fence, again, you get some reasoning behind it. And so, you know, you can try and decide based on that reasoning, whether he's worth the risk or not. Um, so we get the experts' opinions here, and then lastly, we get the two scores below. The rank I already talked about. It's kind of our overall rank for how much we like that driver for this particular race. And then there's a Vibe score, and Vibe is a cool little thing we do. Uh, we've got a system in the back end that goes out and reads all the strategy articles that are out there and kind of analyzes them to get a feel for how much these guys are being propped uh, in strategy articles all over the Internet. Um, and so it, it's not necessarily a true projection of like ownership, 
but more of just popularity and awareness. And so, um, you know, obviously when it comes to trying to project uh, ownership percentages, there's a lot of factors that go in, you know, for example, you know, how many drivers are, are viable at a certain price range and, um, you know, uh, the the how tight or loose the cap is for that week and the pricing in general uh, as to what you can fit in. So rather than get too complex with that, we wanted a simple score that said, hey, this is how much people are talking about these guys as far as building them in rosters. Um, and it gives you kind of an idea of uh, how popular they're going to be. Um, and, and maybe more, even more importantly, guys that are kind of off the radar. Uh, obviously, especially in a sport like DFS, um, you know, it's interesting that, uh, or sorry, not DFS, but in NASCAR, you've only got 40 racers. And so separating yourself from the field is, is even more important because there is so much overlap. And so if you can get that guy like a Chase Elliott here, who not a lot of people are talking about, he's only got a five or two scores, but he's rated at four and a half stars. Um, it really can help you get some edge on the field, uh, and allow you to get some exposure to a guy who can really, um, you know, set yourself apart when the races start on Sunday, and and give you a chance at a at a, at a uh, you know larger field GPP score. Um, so as you can see, I mean, you can come through here, and in a in a short amount of time, uh, a really short amount of time, you can kind of come through and decide, hey, these are the guys I like, these are the guys I don't like, you know. Um, and again, you can start to uh, weed people out that you're not going to use and uh, come down to a, a driver pool where you feel comfortable. Um, now, this top right corner, let me tell you how you can interact with these drivers in this cool thing. Obviously, you've seen that I can X out and move uh, drivers back and forth between plays and fades. Uh, this arrow here is pretty cool. It allows you to shrink uh, the boxes. Um, and so, you know, once you kind of look through the information, if you've decided you're keeping somebody and you don't need the information, you can go ahead and shrink these to get yourself some extra space. Um, or if you want, you can even come up here and there's an expand and collapse all, and you can actually shrink them all. And when it's shrunk, you can still see the rank and the vibe just for a little bit of basic information. Uh, but this is a great way to kind of condense your dashboard and, and, uh, just to have, again, a quick look. I mean, just by the colors and visuals and ranks, <coughs> excuse me, um, <coughs> you can, uh, you can see very quickly, you know, who, who your top drivers are. And then we've got this star rating, and this is where you can start to go ahead and come in and set exposure. Uh, and so you can come in and basically determine how much uh, exposure you may want um, for each of these drivers uh, based on um, based on your own opinion and based on the data you have here. And then I'll show you in a minute how we're going to use this in our roster builders here to actually generate rosters. Um, but it's also a great thing, even preliminarily, you can just kind of start to decide to code these guys based on how much you like them. And as you can see, the colors are different. Um, you know, the, the low end colors, again, red to yellow, orange to yellow to green, um, which allows you to, um, again, get a very quick visual of where you're at with things. Uh, slide down here and we'll get some Elliot exposure. Um, right. And so... I mean, again, you can kind of match them to the colors if you want. Um, obviously, there's times where you may want to fade a strong play if he's really popular or whatever. So I don't necessarily have some specific recommendations on here. But again, these are all plays that our experts feel confident in. And so the main thing is, unlike a projection system where, you know, the top 20 plays on the projection system, maybe 10 of them are good and maybe 10 of them are bad. You never, ever have to feel concerned about putting one of these guys in your lineup. Like this, this is set up so that if you just ran exposure off of all the guys here, you can feel safe that any one of these are showing up in your rosters. Whereas these guys are guys that you really shouldn't put in unless you have a specific reason that you want to do so. Um, once you've kind of set some exposures, there's two cool ways we've got set up to build rosters. Uh, the first one of them is building custom rosters. And this is a cool little uh, feature I like because when I build rosters, I like narrative street. I like to think about how does what one person do affect the other. Um, you know, for example, in this particular race, Keselowski and Truex were 1-2, right? Well, one of them is going to win... Um, you know, the, the start of the race and be up front first. And so uh, does that necessarily mean that they're both, you don't want both in the, uh, in the same 
roster. Not necessarily, because a lot of things can happen during a race. But maybe you do want to take that stand. Maybe you do want to decide that one of them is going to lead the first 40 laps, and so you don't want both. So when you come in here, you can build rosters just like you would on, on DraftKings or FanDuel. Um, you can come in, add your players. Um, they're going to show up on the right. Uh, you can see uh, re average remaining per player. You can see how much you have left. Uh, and the system will, uh, you know, mark out the ones you've taken and mark out which salaries aren't available. Once you've got a roster built, you click save. And the roster pops down here into your queue. And you can also see uh, in this queue how much exposure you have to each driver down here uh, compared to the exposure that you set that you wanted to target. Um, and the real cool thing about this is let's say you want to lock you know, Kislowski, Kenseth, and Blaney into a bunch of lineups together. Um, now I can just get rid of a couple, and I can build a different configuration, uh, and I can save. And then I can pop out some more, and I can – oops, didn't want to do that. Um, and I can build uh, a different combination here and save. And basically you can continue to – uh, build rosters from scratch in a short amount of time, save them off, and again, the exposure is up here, date here, so you can always keep an eye on you know, how big of a uh, exposure you have to any particular driver, and you can build as many rosters as you want. Once you've built your pool, pool up how you want, um, or if you want to delete some of them, you, know, you can delete it, and again, uh, you can see exposure updates. But once you've got what you're satisfied with, um, you click download rosters. And this is going to download a, a DraftKings suitable CSV that you can upload right into your uh, rosters on DraftKings. And that will allow you to have those rosters available to enter. So this is a cool way to kind of um, quickly mass generate some rosters that you're actually putting some uh, elbow grease and thought into. And at any point, if you want, you can click reset rosters and it'll start over from scratch. Um, Let's say that that's not a way you want to go, though. Uh, we have the more traditional way here. I'm going to shrink this. Uh, we have the more traditional way to build rosters, and that's the mass generate. And uh, by clicking mass generate, it's going to bring up a, a, a screen here. And we've got two numbers that are kind of key for uh, roster gen that I haven't seen on other sites. Um, and I'll just talk about these briefly. But... Total exposure, uh, you have six drivers, and you can have 100% at any one position. So you have a total of 600% that you can uh, allot. And so um, when you're going to put projections in, if you just start cranking projections out there and your percentages add up to, say, like 1,000, well, you're not going to get all the percentages you're hoping for because um, essentially uh, it's going to be overweight. And so all those percentages to, to really hit it, they're all going to get um, – watered down and so you know if, if you're adding up to a thousand and you've got guys set at like 50 percent realistically they're going to be they're going to come out closer to 30 percent and so this just kind of gives you an idea of what your total exposure is at if it's too high you may want to come back to your dashboard and tweak a few guys down um, so you know we were at 710 so uh, we got to drop off 110 points so you know you could drop off 30 here we drop off 20 here's 50 we drop off 20 here, let's just do 40, it's 10, we drop off 10 here, scroll down, right, and so we should come in closer to the uh, 600 mark, and we're at 610, good deal. So we're in a good range now. And then average salary, it's kind of the same way, and what this is a little bit more complicated math, but it's doing it for you. It's figuring out um, how much you're spending uh, across the exposure which gives you an idea of how close you're hitting to realistically being able to fill out salaries. Um, again, if you're overweight on this, then your, un, your, your cheap drivers are going to be overexposed in the roster builder because it has to fill rosters that, that fit the salary cap. Um, if you're too low on this, then your high weight, your, your expensive drivers are going to end up overweight. And so you want to hit it close to that average um, per driver rate. Uh, and so this kind of gives you an idea of, of how close you are, and that's close enough for now to do it. Um, and then you can decide how many rosters you want to build. Um, you can decide how much cap room you want. We're just going to set it to 1,000. Uh, I think in NASCAR more than any other race or sport, it's definitely a place where you can leave some wiggle room. Um, and then the iterations really is just how long you're willing to wait. Um, the longer you're willing to wait, a little bit more accurate it's going to be, but it takes a while. We'll just go ahead and put it on the longest setting here. 
and let it generate. And this is going to take, you know, probably a minute or so to run. And what, what's going to happen is when this is done running, um, it's going to come up in the interface just like we had before for the custom roster building, but it's already going to have 100 rosters populated. Um, and again, what's great about this is once these rosters are built, uh, you can come in and you can still tweak things uh, to determine, you know, what you want to adjust in things. And so, you know, you can see because of because we were overweight on um, our salaries, uh, some of these uh, some of these guys are really high. Like Stenhouse is a is a cheaper guy; he's a lot higher than the thirty percent we aimed for. Uh, and so, we probably want to go back and tweak some things, add some more drivers in. Uh, to try and get these these numbers more accurate, um, but again, you can come down here and if you want to get rid of some Stenhouse, you know you can you can come in and, and pull some Stenhouse rosters out and affect the exposure accordingly. And as you do, you can come in here and you can again see how the exposure is changing uh, as you delete each roster. And you can also come in and you can again build new rosters. Um, where only the drivers that are in your picks are showing up here, so you're not uh, having to mess with drivers that you're not interested in, which you know again gives you full confidence that uh, you know the rosters you're building um, have guys that you want, um, and so you know you can you can pop a bunch of these in, and again you can continue to tweak this to your heart's content. And this pool is separate from the other pool, so whenever you want this roster build to be something you're confident in downloading. Uh, you can hit the download rosters button, and again, it will uh, it'll download rosters for you. Now, what's really cool, and what I'm really excited about, uh, is this idea of um, roster edit. <coughs> oh, man, excuse me. Now, I can't. I don't have a file uh, for this week to show you because this race is already passed. But if you've ever messed with mass rosters. On DraftKings, you know that once you've uploaded rosters or edited rosters or registered for uh, contests, um, to edit existing rosters, you have to download a special CSV file from DraftKings and um, edit the uh, rosters that are tied to those accounts. You know, most roster builders, they don't have that option, and so you end up having to open a spreadsheet, pull in the DraftKings file, do a bunch of copy and pasting, save it, re-upload it. We've taken care of that for you. Um, we have the ability to uh, essentially upload, uh, once you've gotten the, the DraftKings edit entries file, you can upload it here. And once you've uploaded it here, it will um, bring up a screen that lists all the contests. And then you have the option to either handpick rosters from either pool that you've created and apply them to those. Or you can decide to, to randomly assign them from... Uh, the existing pools if you don't want to get that granular um, and this is great because you can go ahead and with confidence you know if you know coming into a week you're going to play $23 entries you can register for those $23 entries and download the uh, DK CSV edit entries file come in here build your rosters by hand build your rosters by roster gen whatever you want and then and then upload this file and you can put it all together here download the uh, combined file and upload it to DraftKings and instantly have uh, your new rosters updated on the site so it's gonna save you a lot of time uh, it's gonna save you the ability to um, you know, make changes on the fly. Obviously, NASCAR is not a sport as much as other sports where there are, are last-minute changes. I mean, once in a while, a driver will get sent to the back. Um, but generally speaking, you're not going to have to make too many changes on the fly like you would in a sport like NBA. But the fact that you can do it is great, and also the fact that you can, um, you know, really take your time. And if you want to decide an hour before the race to do all your work, you've got the opportunity to do it versus, uh, versus you know, uh, having to put two or three or four hours into the process. So uh, one other thing I'll show you here is in our settings, we've got options for the display. You know, so in the in the dashboard, you saw we had three columns for how they were qualified. But let's say you wanted to see it by salary. Uh, we can do that. And there's also a condensed driver box that we have. It's just a little bit of a different display. Um, and so if we come in here, now our drivers are, are sorted by salary. 
And so you can see cheap end drivers, middle range drivers, and, and the expensive drivers, uh, which again, as you can see why our, exper our exposure was uh, a little bit skewed in the roster gen is because we were so top heavy here in terms of what we had up top. Um, but the cool thing with this, I'll expand all these, and this box looks a little bit different than the one before. just doesn't take up as much space. It's all the same information. You can still see GPP or cash, what kind of risk they are, um, your hammer points, mover points, practice and finish scores are here, vibrating showed is another here, uh, and in your expert scores. So just a different way to approach it, um, depending on your preference. Um, we'll probably continue adding options for ways to display it as we get feedback from users. Uh, and, and it's going to be a cool way, again, to try and absorb this data as quickly as possible so that you can build rosters on the fly. Um, again, we want you to be able to you know, come in here and, you know, in, in a matter of time, uh, pop some rosters in that you feel good about and hopefully win some money. So that's kind of our tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know or you hit us up. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter at, at DFS Today. Uh, you can also send emails to support at DFS-.com. And uh, we hope to see you at the top of the leaderboards.